start in the video. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a scene at all. So we're gonna first start with a drawing. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to draw the mantle, which is the main body of our jellyfish. And I'm gonna create kind of like a, I don't know, a spheroid elliptical shape here. And then I'm gonna add these, this, this is the opening of the mantle, right? And then along the edge here, I'm going to kind of do these little scallops, okay? And these scallops are gonna be different sections that comprise the mantle, okay? And again, we're doing this kind of landscape. <clears throat> and we're not gonna see the backside really of this, but I'm just gonna put a couple little hints of, of loops here. And then on the inside here, we are going to uh, kind of draw the interior tentacles of, of our sea nettle coming out. And this whole area is just gonna be like covered in multiple colors. We're gonna do a bunch of wet and wet, okay? So this is gonna be, and I'm just using this as a reference of where I wanna put my colors, okay? We're also gonna do, um, between the scallops, we're gonna do some kind of, um, I guess you could call these like seams, you know? Yeah, seams. And then along the mantle, we're gonna add these a little bit later at the end, uh, these longer um, trailing legs from the jellyfish. So there's nematocytes stinging, stinging parts inside the interior legs of the jellyfish as well as the outside ones, which we're gonna add a little bit later, okay? All right, so we have our drawing. Do your drawing now. And then we're gonna get started with everything else. I paint, I drew these really lightly because I didn't necessarily want them to dominate the composition. All right, so get this drawing done right now, please, before we move on. Oh, that didn't help. <laughs> So one of the first things that I'm going to do, once I have my drawing done, is I'm going to wet the area of the mantle. Can I get a little wet? Not totally saturated, but just enough so that I can do some wet and wet. It's funny that, you know, as you add water to this, you know, you're gonna kind of activate the the graphite, it's gonna kinda of start moving around a little bit. All right, so we're gonna do a yellow. I'm going into my yellow. I'll grab some yellow. And I'm gonna just start, and what I wanna do is also preserve some white within here. So I'm gonna start near the mantle edges and the seams and things like that. And I wanna keep some of the interior white, okay? So I'm going along the edges, going along the seams of the mantle. Preserve some white areas. And those are gonna be my highlights because we're not using white paint to go over and create highlights. We're gonna use white from the actual page that we're painting on to preserve some highlights, okay? So, gotta preserve 
that white in there. Okay. Pretty cool. Edge to edge. And again, you know, as we're as we're working with watercolor and in my class, I don't really care if you can see pencil marks. It's okay. It doesn't really bother me. Okay? So we've preserved some of the, the white within the mantle. Okay, those are gonna be our highlighted areas. Now we're gonna go and choose another color. We're gonna grab some red. And this is going to be kind of a, that contrasty color. So I'm gonna mix this on my mixing tray here, which is a part of this old set, but it's, you know, again, kind of falling apart. I'm gonna grab a little yellow so I can make this more of a dark uh, red orange or, or orange, but it's more like a, a red orange. And I'm gonna use this red orange for uh, some particular things. One, I'm gonna go through along on these seams here of the mantle as well as the outside of the mantle, and drop those in as kind of an outline. I'm gonna go along the seams, the bottom here. And because this is kind of wet, it's cool, it's gonna blossom a little bit and run, and that's okay. I don't mind that. Less pressure I put down on the brush, the finer my line I can make. The more pressure, the more paint I can deposit onto the page. And keeping it loose and organic, light. Now I'm gonna just grab a little bit of water and then just help that run a little bit. Fade that in. Some areas I want to have like that. I want it shadowed a little bit. Same thing in here on the interior part of the mantle that we're making. A little bit darker. Okay. All right. I want to grab a little bit of orange, just a smidge. I already made. Set that down. I want to do that up here. Just at the top of the mantle. So that there's a, a gradation from red to orange to yellow. And same thing on some of the edges here. and grab my tissue. I think I want a little dark there, so I'm just gonna pull some of that color out. And just by blotting, just by blotting. While the paint's wet. There we go. More like that. So use this time now to kind of spend some time on the mantle. We're staying in a really warm color palette. 
of reds, red, oranges, and orange. <clears throat> the next step that we're gonna do, we're gonna be working on the interior here. We're gonna be laying down preliminary color of purple, okay? And we're gonna use some wet on wet. So we're going to uh, wet this whole area inside here first with some water. And my water's a little dirty right now, which may help you guys see what I'm doing. And this is a really fast process. We're just doing one, but if you wanted to do more than one uh, jellyfish, you could, no biggie. You could do a composition with multiple on one page. But this is just a primer to kind of give you guys an idea of what you can do with wet and wet and using the magic that is watercolor. Okay, so my whole interior area is wet. Okay, so what I'm going to go to now is I'm going to dig into some blue, purple, and I'm going to just start dropping in color. And I want to kind of vary it so that um, I want the purple kind of showing through and also kind of flowing and blooming and doing its magic. I'm going really loose with my brush strokes, as you can see. I'm pulling paint around. I'm dropping it into wet areas. And I want these kind of variances in line weight, okay? That makes any sense if you know what I'm talking about cool and I want it to be really loose and I also want to have that variation in, in change in tone like areas that are darker areas that are lighter I'll push some of this purple into the mantle area. And it's going to create a really cool contrast. From those warm tones of the mantle itself to the purples underneath it. See that? Super fun. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. And once this dries, it's going to look really cool. Like these lighter areas next to these darker areas, it's just, it creates a depth of field that you won't get in any other form. Okay. All that stuff. Oh, these blooms are so beautiful. Now, I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to load it up with some of this dirty water. Because I want to go back in here and we're going to add some more colors. I want to make sure that that's nice and wet for when I drop in some oranges and some reds or purples, so some red purples. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, dig into my orange, get it nice and wet, and then just start dropping in some oranges in between. having that bloom come to life. All right. Creating cool depths of field by just having this wet and wet and move around and have fun with it. Just let it be, you know. What's cool about watercolor is you kind of have to let go sometimes when you're doing these things. 
Look at that. Ah, oh, the mixing is gorgeous. <clears throat> You know what, let's do some yellow. Let's drop some yellow in there. Yeah. Some of these areas. And again, we want to keep that purple there to kind of create that contrast between mantle and the interior, um, interior legs or arms, you might call. some more purple to kind of create that contrast inside too as well. Now, we're getting really close, right? It's looking pretty cool, right? The last thing that we're gonna do are gonna be the trailing legs on the outside parts of the mantle. out a little bit yeah that's much better okay we're going to get into our red we're going to mix that with a little bit of green it's gonna make kind of a earth tony brown when you mix complementary colors together like red and green you get a brown we're going to use that brown we're going to use that brown to create these trailing legs okay so watch me we're going to just find one it's kind of like a threads coming off of coming off the the mantle okay keep it really loose load up a lot of paint into your brush okay And notice how I'm just like going in random directions. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my brush whatsoever, okay? And I'm pulling from right to left as I'm going. So I'm gonna do it one more time over here, just so you guys can see. Ooh, and sometimes you mess up, and that's okay. And then you just kinda, kinda do it again. Doop. All right, load up your brush. I'm gonna have some come, come in from the back, and then back out, and then back in, and then back out, right? Another one coming this way, maybe it'll come over here, right? <clears throat> you wanna show movement. This one's behind. I'm gonna put some uh, 
sun all over the field. I'm gonna wait for this to kind of dry. Done behind. And also vary your lengths. You know, some of these are gonna be longer, some are gonna be shorter. And that, my friend, is your singing nettle.